Today in Riverbend, we are going to be doing several things. I just want to prepare you guys. Today, we're going to start off by building a beautiful, relatively modern entrance. And we're going to end it off with completing, not really completing, but getting some more work done on our little bit of our quote-unquote forest trails. So, welcome back, everyone. In case if you guys are new, Riverbend is our semi like budgeted zoo uh not really hyper themed like all my other zoos this is really more like a semi realistic zoo that has a lot of things taken into account like you know we can't really afford the theming that los monsteros really can or it doesn't really have the same vibe that sugar pine was going for or it has a much longer lifespan than tear garden has i know i have way too many series i gotta cut back on that but i'm thinking of starting a new one <laughs> but welcome back everyone to, uh as you guys can tell, we're starting to work on our little bit of an entrance slash ticket booth. This is very much going to serve as the entrance to our zoo. And yes, I know I finally am making an entrance. I know it's absolutely wild to think about. But you can see us doing our typical jazz over here. We're essentially just using, you know, the same pieces we've been using throughout the entire zoo. We essentially worked ourselves up with a palette initially. Kind of like a palette that is really more so aligned with like... You know, it's going to be wood, it's going to be stone, and that'll be it. No other frou-frou stuff in there. Now, one of the issues I promptly ran right into was the fact that I was building an irregular shaped building, and the roofing is quite literally a struggle. So we got that all done relatively soon. You'll see that all pop up in just a little bit. I'm very happy with how well this entrance came out though. I really wanted it to have a splash of color. So that's exactly what we do. I'm not sure if we keep it at that path. I'm not really sure what I'm doing right there. I think we do change it back to the regular concrete mod uh, texture that we have going on before there. So do keep that in mind. We're not going to stick with that jazz right there. But essentially I'm using that slate roof to give a nice little bit of a modern look to my build. Uh, just to make sure that everything all flows nicely and we kind of do like an a-shaped roof nothing really too intense over here again riverbend is not like you know it's nothing crazy it's very much a simple zoo very much based off of um you know i think i was very inspired when i came back from naples zoo for this zoo in particular because it's nothing too crazy it's nothing too hyper themed maybe you have a little bit of theming here and there but it's nothing that really screams oh man they blew their budget on all this stuff no it's very much all the same as each other and i think i really do like it because of that because of that riverbend is a little bit more of like a simpler zoo and you know what? I'm very happy to be working on that. So in case if you guys aren't aware, we do have a few different projects happening in Riverbend right now. Uh, I do want to finish it up for, you know, I really don't have enough time. So it'll be finished in 1.9. But I do need to work on that little exhibit. Uh, not exhibit, but our reptile house. I do need to finish that up. Uh, I need to finish up, like, the playground slash splash pad. Try saying that five times fast. But, uh, essentially just planning all that stuff out is what I'm gonna be doing right now. But, you can see us working on this. I want to have a little bit of a green roof, in case if you guys don't know. Green roofs are a little bit more of a modern practice, which a lot of, like, you know, naturalistic inspired institutions have been starting to do as a way to use rainwater for its advantage as it also gives uh, like the interior of buildings a lot better cooling during the summer and a lot better heating during the winter it's very cool how that all works it's it's like natural insulation if that makes any sense also looking on the workshop for who made that beautiful beautiful um solar panel and they're already in the riverbend um wall of credits i guess you could kind of call it that and i also want to have these little bit of modern shade structures nothing crazy again it's very simple so i'm just using a bunch of metal pieces and it very much reminds me of that modern one from zoo tycoon in case if you guys have ever played zoo tycoon one you'll know exactly what i'm talking about but i was very happy when that all worked out together and it looks pretty nice in the end so that kind of serves as a little bit of an entryway for like you know getting your tickets and stuff it's very much for the ticket booths and whatnot so that's all right in there and i also want to do a little bit more of like a modern entryway too so i do a little bit of fun stuff with the wood so we kind of do this very interesting very um artsy looking pattern i guess you could kind of describe it as so we kind of do this a little bit and we kind of repeat it all the way throughout there and it looks really cool it feels a very um 
I don't know how else to describe it. It feels very modern and it feels very Riverbend. Riverbend has a certain vibe that I've been digging recently and it's just really fun to build for it, especially when you're like, I don't know, trying to find something else to do. It's very much a zoo where it's like, I don't know what to put in here, let's just put in something random. And that's what I like about this project. Uh, also doing some minor details throughout here. I will need to go back and correct the sizes on here because unfortunately, I made them a little bit too high up and I made this building a little bit too big. In fact, I think I could just shrink the building down. I think I may just lower it a little bit. I think that may be what I'm gonna do going forward. But um, essentially just adding the rest of the minor details into here, adding like the uh, holding supports for the rest of the building. And I also wanted to kind of like block off the rest of the area. But what I do in the end, I do change the color of the entrance because I felt like it was needing a little bit more of a pop. And it looks so much better with it like that. So that's all pretty good right there. And we're also doing a lot of foliage work for the first half of this little part of the entranceway. Because I didn't want to put any exhibits over there just yet. Uh, normally when you have a zoo like this, you do put an entrance at... Well, you do put an exhibit at the entrance. But um, no, I decided no. I don't want to do that. I want to have like a nice open plaza. And you kind of like get guided into one direction or the other for the zoo. So I think that works pretty pretty well over there uh what i'm also doing i'm stealing some other stuff from around the zoo because again riverbend has its own kind of vibe where it's like they reuse a lot of their own things and that's what i kind of like about this project so we kind of reuse most of this stuff throughout the entire zoo and it looks so good in the end it just feels very cohesive and some may say it feels a little bit repetitive and to that i agree like that's the whole point of it um, it's just a certain vibe of the zoo that I'm going for, and I'm very happy with how well it turned out. So, essentially what I'm doing over here, I'm just kind of blocking off the rest of that forest. Because do keep in mind, people, when they go to the zoo, can be a little stupid. They may go in places that they really aren't supposed to. So it's best to really cover that up with as many fences and stuff as possible. Just make sure that you're including as much logic as possible in your zoos to keep guests from doing what they're not really supposed to be doing. And I'm also adding a lot of foliage in here. Oh my gosh, I loved building foliage for Riverbend and it's such a nice theme to work with. Especially after the European pack, it's just such a nice little theme to build with. And why I also didn't realize up until now I was using modded pieces. I know, I apologize, but I think I got rid of them all. So hopefully when you guys do load into the file, which should be out relatively soon, I do want to get this done in like the next few weeks, so do keep your eyes peeled for that. But once you guys do load into the file, you don't need to have any mods installed for it to work. Uh, obviously, I do build for a lot of modded animals, so you guys would want to have those installed at least. But after you guys, you don't even need to do that. You could add in replacement animals as like a light version. I know Just Goron does that for the Bexy Barkin, so that's something I may consider doing as well. We will certainly see. Now moving on through here, I really just want to include as many like small details as possible because listen for the first half of this, it's not really the most interesting, I'll admit. We're just building an entrance, so I really want to make sure I get everything else all taken care of, be it lighting, be it foliage and all that stuff and like the small minute details like trash cans, like uh, dense foliage like the bamboo and just general ways of making this feel a lot more built up, a lot more um, lived in if that makes sense. So we essentially copy a lot of other things from around the zoo. In that little ditch between the honey badger exhibit and the entrance, I did throw some like, you know, faux rock rubble over there. I think that looks pretty good in the end. And I also have this little bit of a walkway over here. Hopefully we should be building in this walkway relatively soon. I think Jen released a certain mod that fits this zoo's vibe perfectly. So we'll actually get those guys included as well. I want to build them a very nice habitat. They're found at Southwick's in case of you guys don't know. And they have a very good exhibit at Southwick. So that should give you guys a little bit of a hint, especially for my New Englanders. And so what I'm hoping to build next for Riverbend. But essentially going through this all, I was really starting to wonder what I needed to build next. Next. And I was just looking at everything and I eventually kind of settled on uh, building for fallow deer. And here we go getting started on that. Uh, essentially, I built this and I was like, okay, I genuinely don't know what to build for. So I do the minor things first. Again, this is another part of my building process. I try to tell as many people as possible if you're stuck on something. 
go be unstuck on something else. I know that makes such wonderful sense. Great job, Leaf. Great word usage. But no, I'm being completely serious. If you guys are getting stuck on like a single project, maybe that's a sign to like work on something else. And I always do recommend that to my friends because it really does pay off when you like hit yourself in the head into a wall or something and then you're like you turn around and you see a nice little hallway over there it's like the back rooms or something but no it's a really fun process that i always do embrace if you see something that needs to be filled and you have the drive to do that always try and you know hold on to that drive i don't know maybe i'm being a little bit more introspective right now who the hell knows but essentially going through here i did settle on fallow deer because i have not built for these guys yet and they're the perfect kind of low budget zoo kind of animal so I do have a bunch of those guys in there, and I was very excited about that. So I want to have them have like this beautiful pond that separates the guests from them, because I was very inspired off of Queen Zoo, which I recently was able to visit. Uh, really nice zoo. Um, don't go out of your way to go there, though. <laughs> but I was very inspired by that to make this kind of exhibit that feels like it doesn't have any fences. So that's exactly what I do over here. And I also built them a nice large barn. I should probably expand this because we do have a herd of about like 10 or 12 in here. So that's about what we're working with right there. But it does look pretty good in the end. I'm very happy with how well it came out. But moving on through here, I really just want to have this nice little overhang structure so that they could stay warm and dry during like, you know, the rainstorms and whatnot. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it right there. Uh, that's about all that I have to say about that holding structure because you guys know me I don't really like to do interiors all that much or backstage really uh Riverbend is very much a low backstage kind of zoo um I apologize if your guys are into that kind of stuff go watch leader he's a wonderful creator who actually does that kind of stuff <laughs> But moving on through here, spawned in a few fallow deer and you can see them in just a little bit. And I want to have this nice rock wall in the back just because, I don't know, I didn't want to do fences. I thought that would be a little bit too intrusive. So I thought that having this exhibit be built into like a cliffside would work pretty well. So we do our tried and true kind of rock decorating over here. Uh, just big swaths, big swaths of rocks um, all over the place. And it looks pretty good in the end especially over there in like the guest perspective it looks pretty damn good over there and i'm very happy with how well all that came out and what i essentially do for the time being i also add a bunch of foliage and stuff and that's essentially what we do for the rest of this habitat because fallow deer fallow deer they don't require climbing they don't require that much uh they just require a nice open space and that's exactly what we do give them uh they're also grazers so i wanted to be ensure to include a lot of nice lush and open plants for these guys because they deserve it. Listen, these guys are my babies. I always love fallow deer. When I went to Southwick's, always loved going in the deer forest because they would always have the most beautiful deer species there. I know like a lot of people, you know, people like their white tails, people like their red deers, elk, moose. I've always loved fallow deer the most. They're so beautiful and they just seem so peaceful. Uh, yeah, what else can be said? Just adding that rest of you know the whole rest of the riverbend foliage very happy with how well it's turning out it's i love seeing riverbend on its final days because it's been such a fun project i know it's not everyone's favorite like you know series for planet zoo but it still means a lot to me that i was able to build this all from a simple lynx enclosure I have no clue how it ended up to be here from all that jazz but i'm very happy with the progress that we made with it but you know what it's about that that's all about i have in regards to that i'm sorry guys i'm wicked tired right now <laughs> it's been a wild few days but essentially just working our our way through here uh adding a lot more like you know cattails and stuff like that adding some faux rock rubble as well just because this is kind of like the stuff you would see towards like the bank of a river and stuff like that it's not really a river but it does have like you know that kind of river river kind of vibe also adding some nice little lilies in there as well just really wanting to help brighten up the area a little bit and everyone on like facebook everyone on bro nation they're all freaking out about this exhibit by the way shout out to leader for that feeder over there really 
awesome piece right there. Really awesome set as a whole. Uh, but yeah, all you guys were freaking out about this exhibit. This really wasn't too bad. Um, I've done stuff I'm a lot more prouder than this one, but I'm really happy that you guys enjoyed it because, I don't know, it was a really fun thing to build for, especially for Fallow Deer. These guys were like one of my first mods, which was really amazing. And they're also some of my favorite kind of deer species. So it means a lot that I was able to give them a nice home that everyone does love. We're also decorating the guest site as well because I do love to do that. Um, and we kind of fence it off with that same fence that we built for the porcupine exhibit. The porcupine, by the way, did get updated thanks to Frazzle. It does not crash anymore. Uh, so go check that out, guys, if you haven't already. Really cool mod. Really, really innovative mod, too. So go check that out. But yeah, just adding the rest of the jazz in here, adding like these beautiful fences I had made a while ago. I really love the caps of them because they feel fake. Like they feel kind of plasticky, but still kind of represent like nice natural foliage. And we're also using those Aleppo pines. I don't really use those all that often ever since we did get them in the European DLC, but you know, they make, they make good use. Um, but going throughout here, just adding a lot more stuff like the logs and stuff and yeah that's pretty much it oh my gosh i'm sorry i was so tired to get today guys uh don't really know what's happening but hey hope you guys enjoyed the video nonetheless hey even if you muted me i still appreciate you guys watching it nonetheless uh in case if you guys are new here i highly do suggest you subscribe uh we will be doing a giveaway soon for the um wetlands dlc so keep your eyes posted on that but in the end i do want to thank you guys one last time for stopping by always does mean a lot my name is leaf and i can't wait to see you guys in the next episode take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days bye bye now